cracking everybody welcome back to the channel this is the carter 117 aka hodor your boy in today's video we're going to check out an awesome elite controller configuration that i came up with for diva if you are looking for any other overwatch character configurations please check out my other videos in this series i have left links on the characters i have made videos for so far on this image on the screen now and in the description be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can check back for more videos now let's get to it. Thanks for joining me again, and I definitely appreciate all your help and all your feedback. So, just like I've said in all the other videos, you definitely want to go onto the back of your Elite Controller and lock both of your triggers. It's the two buttons that are on each, one button on each side that are above the paddles. When you push those down, it makes it so the trigger presses are only halfway. This is pretty important because it can help you get a full trigger squeeze or at least make it feel like you're getting a full trigger squeeze but it's only going 50% of the way. Which makes it so that way you it cuts down milliseconds which add up over time to getting quicker shots off in the game. And also I want to make a quick note about the sticks. The Elite Controller comes with three sticks. There's a low, medium, and a high. I personally use the low sticks on both my left and right thumb stick. Some people believe, in theory, that using a higher stick or a taller stick on the right-hand side can make you more accurate. And for some people, they are. But for me, personally, since I've been playing Xbox, since the original Xbox, I'm just very used to the stick height. I find it's much more comfortable and I'm much more accurate with the, with the lower stick. So I put low on both. But I suggest if you want to mess with the sticks, to just start with the middle one and then go big if you want to and give it about a week or two to try to get used to the to configuration that way. So what we're going to do first though is we're going to go over the abilities that D.Va has. As you can see her ultimate is the self-destruct which is really 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 powerful. If anyone's around anywhere close to the mech that she uses you're gonna die. Even she'll kill herself. She doesn't care. She's suicidal. You know what I mean? Um, so using wise is self-destruct. Now, there's also the calling the mech. So when you get killed pretty much in the mech suit, you'll jump out of the mech and you have to wait for your ultimate bar to fill back up to call back your, your mech. So you just hit Y for that too. So it's like two separate things. And then we're, you have LB, which is a boost, which is kind of can get you up high if you really want to be. Um, it kind of throws you in whatever direction you're facing for a couple seconds. RB is a defense matrix, so it's it shoots like this. It has like displays this thing in front of you that that blocks all the bullets coming your way. And then RT is the fusion cannons. The fusion cannons you don't ever have to reload, so they're just continuous. You can fire them forever long you want. And it doesn't really matter. The passive ability is just the ejecting. So we talked about that earlier with the other ultimate that you get. Now, let's go into the game and check out what my options are for my sensitivities. So hit RB twice and go to controls. What you want to do is you want to go just hit A once you get there and it will give you the drop down to show you all of the heroes that you can use. And we're going to pick D.Va. Now, just a note, this is very subjective and you're going to need to fiddle with this some on your own to figure out what you really like. But, I'm going to show you what the sensitivities I use are. So, right now I actually haven't set to the sensitivities that I would use so that way I could show you kind of how it works. So once I select D.Va I'm going to actually go and make my horizontal s sensitivity to 28. And as you can see, it says delete override on the top. So that way, you can set an overall characters to whatever setting you want, but whenever you use D.Va, it's going to use these settings. Um, and then I set my vertical sensitivity to 23. I find that that's pretty good setup for me because her fusion cannons have very wide spray and they do a lot of DPS and you're supposed to be pretty close when you're using them to get the max DPS out of them. So more so you're going to be looking left and right as opposed to up and down and then if you do need to look up I kind of slow it down a little bit so that way I can be a little bit more accurate be able to reach that plane of view. Now now that we figure out the sensitivities we're going to go ahead and take a look at what the controller configuration is. So we're going to go down to the Xbox Accessories app hit configure, and then we're going to create a new configuration. Alright, now that you've named your new configuration, there's a couple button mappings that we definitely want to change to, for ease of use. So, in order to map buttons on the Xbox Elite controller, you're going to want to make sure that you hold the button you want to assign to first and then the button that's, be, that's, that's actually being assigned. So 
thinking about Diva, and the goal of trying to not take my thumbs off the thumbsticks as much as possible so that way I can stay accurate, stay moving. These are the configurations I came up with. So what I want to do is I want to put the LB button on my left trigger. So what I'm going to do is hold down uh, the left trigger and then I'm going to hit LB. So the reason I'm doing this is so that way I can control the boosters pretty easy. I find that it's actually for me personally, because my hands are so big, I much prefer using the triggers for stuff I use more often than the buttons. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable, especially when you're doing a lot longer of the time. And since she doesn't really have an L a left trigger ability, you know, why not? All right. And then after that, I'm going to assign the right bumper to my lower left hand paddle. So I'm going to hold my lower left hand paddle, and then I'm going to hit RB. So that way I can kind of control both those things with the opposite hand and focus on aiming and holding the trigger with my right hand. Um, the, other, uh, the rest of the buttons don't really matter too much with this configuration. What I would do though is I would actually get rid of Y from the lower right hand paddle so that way you don't accidentally hit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the lower right hand paddle and then assign it to the R3 click. That's the melee in this game, like most games, and I much prefer meleeing with that as opposed to the thumb click because I hate it when I click the right thumbstick on accident when I'm in the middle of shooting because I'm raging out all over the game and meleeing when I'm supposed to be shooting someone. It definitely makes the game a little bit more of a pain in the ass. So after we map those buttons, I'm going to go to my left stick and I'm going to set this to aggressive. As you can see, the rings around the controller on the left, when I move my left thumbstick around, it shows what I'm doing. The rings, as you can see, are pretty much the bends within the graph on the left. So what I want to do is I actually want to increase my aggressiveness all the way over to the second to the last one. So as you can see, it moves pretty quick. Like As soon as I'm hitting this, it's over there. The reason I do this is so that way I can strafe left and right so I can be less predictable with the people that are shooting at me. Alright, now we have that set, I'm going to go to the right stick. I'm also going to set this one to aggressive, but I'm going to downplay it one. Because I still want my aiming to be somewhat smooth, but the accuracy of dead-on headshot or dead-on body shot really doesn't matter because the bullet spray on her cannons is so big. Obviously, you'll do more damage if they're, you know, if you're hitting right directly on the reticle. But at the same time, it's not too, too fast to where you'll be missing the body completely. Um, but this is very subjective as well, so you can tweak these options as you see fit. Now I'm gonna go down to the triggers, and I'm gonna assign the triggers. So on the left trigger, I'm gonna keep that zero. So that basically means that as soon as my button touches the trigger, it registers the, the trigger being pulled. But what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the right, the right number up to 1, which basically just means that's my range of motion on the trigger. As you can see, I'm pushing the trigger now, and the little circle's turning up. So it pretty much creates a, a hair trigger. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right trigger as well. The more instantaneous, the better. All right. And the last thing I like to touch on is the vibration. I like to put my vibration all the way down for the most part, besides on the left main and right main. The reason I do that is so that way I have a tiny bit of vibration because I'm really, really, really bad at noticing when I'm being shot at in some of these games. Once you have are finished messing with your buttons and, and mapping your sticks and everything like that, to assign it you want to go down to Overwatch Diva and then assign it to slot 2 or slot one, whatever one you have open for the configuration. For me personally, when I'm playing Overwatch, I like to have an Overwatch configuration on both of the save slots. So that way, if I need to switch to a different character mid-game, I don't have to go around and back into the app and change the configurations. So I have a basic overall settings that I like to use that pretty much work for all the characters easily. Um, so if you want to check out that video within this series, go for it. It's a pretty quick video. I mostly just stuck to button mappings, but this should at least give you a more detailed description now of what I would use for D.Va. That's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in to the channel. If you have any comments or any feedback on the video or other characters or games you want to see configurations for, please let me know. I'm definitely more than willing to create videos for you guys or go into more depth in the videos for you guys. 
I appreciate your time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that we can catch all my future videos. I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm out.